Wonderful day here in Kansas City, folks. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, Mike 52, Mike 52. Why they say? How are we gonna make Oakley, you know, compete with the Nikes, the Adidas, you know, the people who have been in the sportswear world and the football world for a long time? Oakley came to Step with a really exciting brief. They hadn't announced it yet, but they had signed on to become one of the very few official partners of the NFL. Turns out there's very few brands who are actually an official sponsor of the NFL. And at the time, from what we understood, it was Oakley's biggest sort of athletic partnership to date. And with that as a huge investment for the brand, they wanted to create some content to launch the partnership, really make a splash and do something special. This was definitely the first, like, hey, we need a really big campaign that's gonna get a lot of attention and really establish Oakley as, as a big competitor, not just in the glasses world, but in the sportswear world. So it was a big brief, both for Oakley and our clients at Oakley who wanted to do something really big, but you know, also for us as a big opportunity to, to make a big campaign. They came to us with the hope of telling a story of how that eyewear would impact these players on the field, elevate their game, see the game differently, uh, which ultimately became the slogan. A couple years ago, there's such a flood of POV content via the GoPro phenomenon that it seemed like an interesting opportunity to take something that in theory had been beaten to death and figure out how to elevate it significantly. And I remember even the first call we had with the director, Lee Powis, he said verbatim, like, how would we do the IMAX of POV? And he starts dreaming up shit that none of us have thought about. We have to go through the helmet. We're gonna do it in this way, in this type of CGI, and here's what I want it to look like, and here's the perspectives and lensing. And he brings this really aggressive enthusiasm to the equation that pushes everybody on the team to band together and come up with innovative solutions. With every shoot, like so many commercials these days, it's, you know, they want crazy camera moves, crazy transitions. I don't find them as obstacles a lot of the time. It's part of the job and something I enjoy figuring out how to do and like really diving in and figuring out what's gonna be the best approach for every shot, how to accomplish something. And it can be tricky on commercials because a lot of the times you don't necessarily get to like, to test everything. You gotta kind of go with your gut instinct and say, you know, this is how we're gonna get the shot. And they don't wanna make any sacrifices with anything where it has to be, okay, well, this shot's too hard, so let's just make it easier. You wanna be able to accomplish the creative. I think that's the most important thing for me as a DP is, you know, really creating what's, what's there and, you know, making it work and getting the best shot we can. They paid a lot of money to be able to show these jerseys, and so we wanted to create a game-like scenario and we had to basically build CG stadiums because it was in the off season and you can't fill a stadium with people. It wasn't like a massive budget despite the task. Every second is money. There's creative hurdles of getting this big idea developed and flushed out as well as approved through all the different brand layers, but then coordinating with celebrity athletes who are all in different places of the country, getting the physical production done, and then a spot that really relies on so much CG and visual effects, trying to figure out a way to how to execute that work in an unusually condensed timeline was a huge challenge. So I think that's when our production and post department, luckily being under one roof, could really collaborate and start figuring out as assets came back in the field, what could go in based on the previous to production to initial CGI. Not only was the creative vision ambitious, but we're using a lot of technology we'd never used before. The Sony Venice at the time had just come out with the Rialto, so we were able to build some custom helmet rigs to get the Rialto right in a perfect POV perspective, which at the time, not a lot of people had really done or experimented with. We had no playbook to follow, so we were really sort of what we thought was pioneering sort of this POV technique. So that was pretty terrifying, going in to shoot at this scale without really having done this before, but that's also a recipe for sort of groundbreaking approaches in film. A couple other components, you know, when you're working with celebrity athletes like Pat Mahomes, 
MVP of the NFL that year. Um, you have such limited time as well as you're working within their world. You know, I, I think the day we shot Mahomes for this piece, he had two or three other productions that day. It was like we had two hours in the morning, then it was Pizza Hut, then it was like some bank. So we come in, we get them for an hour or two, and we have to do our work very efficiently. It was actually a problem to solve where we have no time with these athletes. So if we go into their point of view, you know, we can have actors, you know, real athletes, you know, not NFL athletes, but you know, real athletes kind of stand in for them and get the shot with the pro athletes, with Mahomes, and then fill out a full spot when we only have a half hour with the guy. There were some things that took a lot of takes where we were sweating about the timing, you know? So like, there's this slow-mo shot of the player flipping over the head and it's shot with the phantom and there's the water spraying and, and Lee made us do that so many times that everybody was like, we might mess up this whole thing if we don't move on Lee. But I also love that about him that he won't stop until he gets that perfect shot. To myself. What a wonderful world. Yeah, I remember early in the creative process, I think Adam shot me a text message at some point with a link to What a Wonderful World. Obviously, I recognize the song. It's a, it's a famous, known, sort of old, nostalgic song you, most people would recognize. Um, and I didn't really put the connection together until Adam then called and sort of explained that what you see through a prism lens is different than what the normal human would see out of their, their eyes. It enhances your vision, not only metaphorically, but also literally. It does enhance what you're seeing. Adam's thought was, what if when you're looking through a prism lens, that's your wonderful world? And everything's saturated in slow motion, and you're creating this contrast between this very violent sport and this very melodic, whimsical song. And immediately I could see it in my head, and I was like, oh shit, this is gonna be epic. And then it came the time to figure out the feasibility of like, how do you license a track like that? Can you even get the original? Do you do a cover? Is there all the hurdles that come with the music side of film, which honestly is one of the most important parts to bring any film to life. You know, whatever music you're pairing with that content is what's gonna sell through that emotion and elevate the visuals to something that people start to really feel. And I think as filmmakers, that's a huge priority in any project, is not only what it's gonna look like, but what it's gonna sound like. And that ultimately became a huge part of this project. I've worked at places where like, you, we have under-delivered. You know what I mean? And that's just not an option at Stepped, honestly. I think people work with us because we'll always give them something that's way more than the budget allowed. And I think that's because of the way that we're set up and that we have creatives and production working out of the same building and we're coming up with ideas together and finding efficiencies. And as an agency on my side, thinking from a production standpoint, and understanding how that stuff works. When I have production working with me and the directors working with me and the DPs, like we all can come up with a really cool idea together. And I think that's how we're able to over deliver is because we don't ever think of things that we don't know if we can pull off. I think there's some beauty to relationships that are that are pushed deeper and fostered in an organic way. Like going into something like this, if it was a new brand or client, I don't think us or them would have had the level of comfort or efficiency that we had. But knowing we'd come off probably a string of 20 plus productions with Oakley, their same creative team with Chase and Marshall at the helm and our creative team with Adam at the helm, there's just a lot of trust there. You know, and I think as we go into these unknowns and push into new territories that haven't really been played in, there needs to be a lot of trust because you can't be working with an athlete in 60 minutes and start second guessing yourself. So I think we were lucky that the brand trusted us a lot. It was an ambitious vision, but they let us run with it. And I, I'm really grateful. I mean, I'm, we've worked with countless brands that I think unfortunately cannibalize some of their own creativity because they're scared to dive headfirst. If you look historically at Oakley's marketing from the past 20 years, they were always doing something very different and loud. And I feel like in the mid 2000s and the teens, that might have started to lull and we came in an opportunity when the creative team there really wanted to start pushing it further again. It was sort of a right place, right time for us, but not only on this NFL project, but throughout all our work with them, we get to do some crazy shit. <laughs> it's fun. Mm -hmm.